Hello and welcome to my talk on deep learning algorithms for coronary artery plug characterization from coronary CT angiography scans. Before I go into detail with the methods that we use, I want to briefly introduce the medical background. Due to inflammation of the tissues surrounding the coronary vasculature, plug deposits can aggregate within the vessel wall, hence obstructing the blood flow. This can have two different outcomes. These plug deposits can either rupture, leading to thrombus formation, which can subsequently lead to events like stroke or myocardial infection, or the vessel is narrowed so far that the heart muscle is malperfused and um, causing ischemia. And what we are trying to do is predict the patient management decision taken based on the coronary CT angiography scan. For this, we leverage a data collection consisting of 95 patients where 345 lesions have um, been annotated with the stenosis grade. And we also have branch-wise labels regarding whether the branch was revascularized using a stent or not. We propagate those branch-wise labels to the lesions with the severest stenosis grade in order to have lesion-wise revascularization labels. And with this data collection, we want to classify on the one hand the stenosis degree and on the other hand the revascularization decision where the lesions are annotated with a defined start and end point and we do not incorporate detection in this work. And we use three different deep learning based approaches for this task and try to improve them. Um, all of these approaches require a prior centerline extraction and work on multiplanar reformatted image volume stacks, which means that for each centerline point, an orthogonal plane is interpolated in order to get a 3D volume which is basically a stretched version of the vessel. The first approach I want to present is based on the work of Zweig and others, which use a recurrent convolutional neural network in order to automatically detect and classify coronary artery plaque lesions. The starting point of this approach is the coronary artery center line, and in our case, the start and end point of the lesion. We reformat this lesion into said multiplanar reformatted volume stack. This volume stack is next cut into a sequence of overlapping cubes and for each single cube features are extracted using a convolutional neural network and the sequence of cubes is then analyzed using a recurrent neural network, namely using gated recurrent units. This architecture really nicely leverages the task at hand because a stenosis most of the time starts with a normal lumen and then gets narrowed and then is widened again. So having the network actually analyze the change of the diameter or the vessel in general along the center line is a really nice property. So the, this is the big advantage of this approach. But on the other hand, it's still some sort of a black box approach and recurrent neural networks are often hard to train. The second approach is based on work of Tichero de Pablos and all others and is a 2D multi-view convolutional neural network based approach. Uh, the starting point is again the multiplanar reformatted volume stack of the lesion. And now instead of analyzing the whole volume stack, only the central slices are taken. 
For each of those central slices, features are extracted using a pre-trained convolutional neural net, pre-trained on ImageNet. And the resulting features are then reduced in dimensionality and encoded and further fitted to a support vector machine. The, all the slices are finally then combined by a majority vote. In our work, we use a different convolutional neural network backbone. Originally, the VGG backbone was used, and we instead chose to use the ResNet backbone. And also, we omitted the radial planes since they performed worst in the original publication. The Benefit of this approach is that it works well with a limited amount of data since the convolutional neural network does not need to be trained from scratch and it somewhat incorporates the 3D context into a 2D network by having the majority vote in the end. However, it's some sort of a black box again, and the features which are extracted by the convolutional neural network can be a gamble. Also, the multi-view 2D representation might neglect some 3D information. Both the foremost mentioned approaches were originally used to not only characterize lesion, but also detect them. Uh, the third approach we want to present is a 2.5D convolutional neural network that we propose in this work. We again start with the volume stack and we again take the central slices, but instead of having distinguished convolutional neural networks for each single slice, we combine them and plug them into a single simple 2D CNN and then just classify it. By this, we significantly reduce the network and the input size contrary to the uh, RCNN approach. And we again incorporate the 3D context into a 2D network. Still, it's a black box and might neglect some 3D information. As I mentioned before, related work algorithms also perform detection. Contrary to that, we have uh, lesions with a defined start and end points, which is a benefit in some regards that we know the region of interest. But on the other hand, we get lesions of very different sizes. And for a network to be able to be trained in a convenient manner, the input size of all inputs should be the same. So the obvious option, which is most commonly used, is to just use zero padding. So the end of the lesion, which uh, all lesions are brought to the same length by just adding a bunch of zeros. However, this introduces a differing amount of total information provided by each single segment. This is problematic since the network most probably only learns the or is heavily influenced by the length of the sequence and the network load differs a lot for each single segment. The second option that's possible is to resize everything to the maximum size. This has the um, advantage of um, having the network load more or less equal for each single lesion. However, high frequency information is pretty blurred out afterwards. And the third option is to resize everything to an intermediate length. With that, you get a compromise between the amount of total and the high frequency information. Also, I want to mention a convenient thing about the task at hand, since all rotations are 
round the center line are valid. We can use them during training and also during testing for the results of the three different padding methods we can see that resizing all lesions to an intermediate size performs best for all three approaches with the biggest differences in the recurrent cnn approach and for the results of applying test augmentations by using different rotations a uh, massive boost can be seen for the multi-view approach of the hero and all. While of course this comparison is not fair since our 2.5D approach inherently already uses two views. In general, our newly pr proposed algorithm slightly outperforms the related work algorithms for our task at hand. So summarizing, we compared and adapted three different deep learning based algorithms in, for the task of predicting the lesion level revascularization decision and the stenosis degree with defined start and end points. We observed that normalizing the lesions with respect of the amount of information provided by each single segment during training boosted the performance of our methods. And the 2.5D approach we propose only needs a sparser representation and does not need as many test augmentations as the other methods or the 2D approach. This concludes my talk and thank you for your attention and I'm open for questions in the comments.